guys, today is going to be my May favourite, which means it's about to be June, which means it's about to be officially summer. I think kind of end of May, June, July, August is pretty much summertime. Um, I don't know about you guys, but where I live it's definitely not summer yet. We've had a couple of warm weather days, um, but for the most part it's been rainy and cold, and to be quite honest, that's going to be a favourite of the month. I'm not a big hot weather person, it makes me cranky and tired, and for me, it's all very well for it to be hot when you're on holiday, but in your actual everyday life, it's not conducive to actually getting things done because I'm just wiped out from the heat. So yeah, I'm not a big hot weather person, so the fact that it's not been great weather this month is actually a bit of a random favourite for me. But uh, to get into the proper favourites, I have a few makeup and kind of hair products to show you, and then a couple of random favourites as I usually do at the end of the video. So I'm going to start with a hair favourite. Um, if you watched earlier in the week, I did do um, a hair care video so you can see all the hair products that I've been really enjoying recently but I thought I would mention this one because I didn't mention it in that video um, because well I'll get into that in a second and you can hear more about that in that video but um, I've been rediscovering the Dove Hair Therapy range and the Nourishing Oil Care Leave-In Conditioning Spray that I talked a lot about last year I really love this stuff but I do find that the more oils that you put in your hair, the more products in general, but I particularly find it with oils, um, it kind of makes your hair brassier quicker. And so the golden tones that you're trying to get rid of um, kind of come back with a vengeance quicker than they normally would do. So much as I really like this, and when I've been wearing my hair, I've been trying to use less heat on it, um, and when I've been wearing my hair naturally wavy, I kind of wait for it to dry naturally, and then I spritz it with this stuff, and scrunch it, and I get a really nice wave to it. And it's nice for every now and then, but I don't want to be using it kind of on a bi-daily basis, or even daily basis, because I do feel like it's weighing down my hair and affecting my colour. So I love this product, but if you're very blonde, let me know if that's something that you found with this, this spray. Um, or just oil products in general. I know there are other ones out there, but I think I'm just kind of going to try and avoid oils for now and very heavy products um, to see whether or not I can keep my blonde brighter for longer. But I have been really enjoying this this month. Smells amazing, so does all of the Dove Care Care range. And in that video, I do tell you some of the products that I am using instead. Um, next, I have a nail polish, and this is one that I've been using on my toes. And it's uh, actually a Christmassy um, nail polish from Maybelline and it's called Wine Shimmer and this one I got at Christmas time, it was kind of December maybe, you know, festive period um, and I got it, I really liked it, um, it's kind of a red, I'll zoom in, here we go, focus, um, it's this kind of red with like a, it's almost a holographic glitter I would say running through it, really really beautiful uh, and on my fingernails it looks nice but obviously it's not particularly seasonal right now but at the moment I have it on my toes and the reason that it's going to be a favourite is because it has lasted so well because it does have that little bit of glitter, I find glitter nail polishes do adhere a little bit better than nails, um, I have on today some Zoya Spring Summer I think um, collection ones which are beautiful, I forget the names, I think it's Wendy uh, is the pink I have underneath both of them, and then I have a pinky purple glitter called Binks, and another one, Alma, that's what I have, Wendy Binks and Alma from the new Zoya collections. Um, but this one, this one I was supposed to be talking about, this one, because it's got the glitter in it, I feel that it, it lasts a little bit longer, and I must have had it on my toes for three or four weeks, and it hasn't chipped at all. I normally have um, kind of the edge toes, let's call them, they kind of peel off and chip quicker because they're going to be kind of rubbed by my shoes. But this has been, it, it was enough for me to kind of think I have to mention that in a favourites video, because it, I tend to have to repaint my toes maybe every two weeks, um, just purely because it does rub off and this has been really, really amazing. And plus, I know it's not particularly seasonal, but I think that it's kind of a nice, it's a nice kind of jelly kind of poppy red and I think the sparkle looks quite nice with sunlight, you know, for toes, I think, although it is kind of festive, um, it's okay. Um, I have a body butter here, been trying to use up some of my body products and this was one that I'd used um, end of last year, maybe the beginning of this year and it's from Avon and I just don't love the smell. The body butter itself is amazing, which is why I've mentioned it. It just smells like sun cream to me, and I know that people like that. There's something in it. I want to say it's like gardenia or something that smells like sun cream. There's, there's something in lots of body products and lots of fragrances that I'm like, oh, and I associate that with sun cream. The scent is called Barley Botanica. It says it has frangipani and lemon lemongrass. Um body butter, that's all it says. So I don't really know about the scent, but if you guys know what that is, what that note is that I'm detecting that reminds me of like Sultan of my youth, then tell me. But yeah, if you don't mind that smell, this particular one, if you are not a big fan of that smell like me, then I would just say try one of the Avon Spa body butters. It's the Planet Spa range um, because it's so, so good. And the 
price point is very, very good as well. The next product I have is what I'm wearing on my lips and it's the Intense Kisses MUA High Intensity Gloss, or the MUA Intense Kisses High Intensity Gloss. Um, and it's this one, it smells nice, it smells like vanilla air freshener, <laughs> it smells nice enough, it's got a doe foot applicator, and it's one of those mid-tone pinks that I've been talking about since I've been blonder. Um, I'm kind of obsessed with the mid-tone pink lip, and I think this is a nice one. Uh, again, really, really good price. There are lots of colours in this range, and I've liked all of the ones that I've tried so far. There's another one, I think it's called Kiss and Tell. This one is called Sealed with a Kiss, and I think it's Kiss and Tell that's kind of a real poppy, um, kind of reddish pink that's a gorgeous, gorgeous colour, really opaque. These remind me a lot of the Apocalypse from Rimmel, without the bleeding, not as thick and glossy, not as messy, and for me, they're a little bit better, but cheaper because they're from Milton UA. The last makeup product I have is from Lord & Berry. It's one of their eyeliners, the Smudge Proof Waterproof Eyeliner, um, and I have it on today again. It is called Smoke, and I have it just kind of underneath there. And what I like about this is it's kind of a bronzy, grey colour. It's really, again, let's, shall we zoom in again? Let's do that. Um, it's this bronzy grey colour. Let's see if you can see. It's not quite black. It's not too dark. It's a little bit metallic, so it's got that little softness to it. Um, and I've just been a little bit obsessed with making that under eye just there a little bit defined. Put a little bit more on. Uh, a little bit defined without it being too harsh. I don't want it to be kind of a black colour, but just a little bit of definition under the eye. And I really like this pencil for doing that because I was using kind of a, a shimmery eyeshadow for a while and a very, very fine um, kind of like a pencil brush. But this has been really, really nice. And I've got another one called Sand that's um, kind of a bronzy golden colour, but it just doesn't quite have enough depth to it. It's not quite dark enough. Um, for the definition that I'm looking for, but I might put the smoke on the outer corner and the sand on the inner corner and kind of give it a little bit of a multi-tonal metallic look, but smoke has definitely been a favourite, and Lord & Berry products in, in general have really impressed me this month. Um, I've been using a lot that I've got in beauty boxes, I'm yet to actually buy something from Lord & Berry, um, but the things I've tried I've really liked. And the last beauty product I have is the Nukes Rubbed Meal Lip Moisturising Stick, and this is the stick version of their uh, lip balm. The lip balm that they do um, in the little tub, which I have here. Ta-da! I actually have one that I'm just about to run out of, which I think is this one, and then a brand new one here. So I cannot be without it. Um, that's probably lasted me about a year, um, and you'll probably see that in next month's empties. But that's lasted me about a year, and I use it every single night, and I just wanted something for during the day that I could kind of complement um, that one with, and I decided to try the Nukes one, and I'm really impressed. It smells the same, it's not as thick. I do need to reapply it. Um, throughout the day, but it feels a little bit luxurious. It's five pounds, I think, there or thereabouts. Um, so it could be a little bit more expensive for a lip balm, depending on what your budget is. But I do think that, you know, five pounds for a lip balm is probably gonna last you a few months, even if you're a, a bit of a, a habitual applier of lip balm, um, it's pretty good. And I think that if it's anything like the other one, long-term, it's definitely worth trying. The other one, I think, is only maybe nine or 10 pounds, and I definitely would recommend that one. I've spoken about that to death, so I didn't feel like I had to mention that one, but it sneaked its way in there anyway. But they are all of my beauty products favorites of the month. I was going to mention this as a random favourite, but I guess it is beauty as well. Um, but it was the uh, British Beauty Blogger Beauty Box that came out this month. I've not had this for very long. Um, if you check out my other channel, I will link it below this particular video. I did kind of a, a rundown of everything that was in the box. Um, but very occasionally, I think she's done three boxes now, Jane from uh, British Beauty Blogger gets together with Latest in Beauty and creates um, her own kind of beauty box, her dream beauty box, and it is fantastic. The products that you get in there for the money that you pay, it's just insane. The actual cost per item is just, you cannot not get it if you manage to get it whilst it's still in sale, because I think they probably, I think the last couple sold out within a couple of hours, I'm sure. This one I managed to get, but I think this one took a little longer. I think it was 24 hours, but still, they don't stay on sale for very long at all. Um, so anyway, I'll link that below, but I was so impressed with this box this month, I had to mention it. And I do actually do full beauty box reviews, so you know, like, um, Love Me Beauty and Birch Box I do at the moment. I do beauty box reviews over on that channel as well, because I feel like there's too many um, for me to be kind of clogging this channel up with it. But if you like beauty box reviews, they will be there as well. TV-wise, I am still completely obsessed with House, but 
Scandal Series 3 is now on Netflix. I don't know if it's on Netflix UK, I say this every time, but it's definitely on Netflix US and um, the UK is getting Scandal a little bit at a time via Sky. I want to say Sky Atlantic, but I'm not totally sure what channel it's going to be on. Um, but this series is amazing. I was up till stupid o'clock the other night watching some because it just totally hooked me in and Oh, so, so good. So that's kind of what I'm still watching on Netflix. Um, also rediscovered, can anyone remember Dinosaurs? I used to watch this when I was a kid. Dinosaurs like um, with Earl and Fran and the kids and the baby that says, I'm the baby, gotta love me. Anyone? No? It's really embarrassing then if you can't remember what I'm talking about, but Dinosaurs. It's from quite a while ago, so the younger viewers may not remember this, but those of you that are kind of like, I don't know, 27 and up <laughs> might remember dinosaurs and I know I've been going on about it for a few minutes now if you actually don't know what I'm talking about I'm gonna seem insane um, but I remember watching it when I was a kid and I've been watching it with Milo and it's like ah oh, major major nostalgia so that's been on Netflix I've been watching that um, on regular TV The Good Wife I don't I'm not gonna do kind of the spoiler thing in case you guys haven't seen it yet but the thing that happened in The Good Wife this month properly knocked me for six I was I was on Twitter like, what just happened? Oh my god! I still, I'm not totally sure where they're going to go with it, but I think there's another series being made now, so they're not going to kind of end it on that. I'm being really ominous for those of you that don't watch it, but something major happened to one of the main characters. Um, something that you never saw coming and it was like, really, really crazy. So that, that happened. Um, and I can't think of really anything else that I've been watching on regular TV that's been really really wowing me. We were watching Community for a while because that was being repeated but then it was repeated in weird order so we kind of couldn't keep up with it so I think I'm probably just going to buy that on iTunes. Um, but yeah, that's what we've been watching on TV this month. Music wise I am still very much listening to my 90s bands. Um, I feel like that was something that I talked about in last month's favourites and then I cut out because the favourites were so long but I am still listening to S Club 7 and um, some really really old stuff. Can you remember Three Little Women? No More, that's been on a lot. Uh, Jennifer Page Crush, Mandy Moore Candy. These are the things that are in my car right now. Lots of Hanson, love me some Hanson. Um, and I've also been listening to a lot of Casey Musgrave, who I love and who is gonna be performing in London a week after I'm at. And I really wanna go, but I feel like I can't kind of justify another night away a week after I've had a night away for I'm at, and I can't possibly get home in time after the concert. So much as I'd really, really like to go and see her in concert, I don't think I'm gonna be able to swing it. So anyway, that's what I've been listening to. Love Casey Musgrave. Completely, 100% go and download her album because it's great. YouTube wise, I haven't really had a lot of time to be watching YouTube this month because I've been obsessed with lots of Netflix shows. Um, but when I have watched it, the kind of people that have stood out that I've really kind of sought out videos from, Chelsea Wears. Chelsea uploaded a video recently. Unfortunately, it was not kind of a current video because it was an older video. She still has some stuff that she needs to put up. Um, I really miss Chelsea. I want updates, actual live real-time updates, but she is on Instagram and Twitter a lot. Um, if you guys do follow her here and are wondering what she's doing, you can see over there and she's had various things going on that I can see why she's maybe not made videos, but still loving Chelsea. She's one of the people that I will go back, like if I'm doing the washing up or, you know, doing something when I want to listen to something in the background, I'll go back to one of her old playlists and just kind of play it in the background. I can listen to her videos over and over and over and even just actively watch them and I don't get bored. I can watch the same video multiple times. It's crazy. There's so few people that I feel like I can just, I like to just sit and listen to them talk and she's one of them. Uh, Kristen Game is another. I love her. I've been watching her a lot this month and again, I know I've mentioned her before, but Sonia Castaneda, love her videos, love her vlogs. I love just how open she is when she talks about making money from YouTube and stuff like that. She's not kind of, I feel like a lot of people, especially American like big time YouTubers like her, are very kind of coy about it and they don't want to talk about the fact that they make money at it and it's their job. And she's very, very open about it and the fact that she's like providing for her son and she's a single mother and that's, you know, you do what you gotta do, etc. And I just, I really like her. I feel like she's not really putting anything on for the camera. She puts on her um, kind of YouTube hat and does very professional videos. Um, occasionally and then she'll do very very laid back. I love her hauls particularly because um, you just feel like she's talking to you like she would talk to anyone and she's not putting on anything. Um, she's not putting on a front for the camera. I really like people like that uh, and they're generally the people that I tend to watch but they're the people that I've been watching this month and that's going to be it for this month's favourites. That's going to have been a long video as it is. If you do like favourites I did do a high-end beauty favourites video um, in the month over on my Spendaholics channel. If you don't already follow that channel Go and follow it. If you're not that bothered about budget-only products, I do a lot of hauls over there. Uh, I do occasional outfits of the day and various other things that you may be interested in. And I did do 
um, kind of my current high-end favourites and I'll probably make that a regular thing just not a monthly thing um, so if you're interested that will be linked below as well hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you guys next time bye